Absolutely, I'm really curious about this one. Uh, I know we heard about it on the analysis somewhat, but I really am uh, keyed into the bot lane matchup here, FBI and Huhi. I agree with Mark Z. I, I think have been a somewhat stronger performing two on two in uh, in this year so far. Uh, Cloud9 though threats in a lot of other places. Blabber mm -hmm. seems to be a frontline MVP candidate. Perks I believe was first team All Pro for mid lane. Uh, Ram obviously only six regular season games, probably didn't get almost any votes. And so now we are into the actual selecting part of champ select as Renekton is insta locked for Cloud9's top laner Fudge. Yep, and that is actually the, the most played top laner by a lot for someday, so it is a nice takeaway from him. Uh, it will be interesting to see where he wants to take us as far as the answers. Uh, notably, the big three, as far as the junglers are concerned, are all banned away. Generally, when these three champions get banned out, you see people move towards the AP junglers. Uh, the Nidalee, the Lilia often come in here. And I think the Nidalee makes a lot of sense uh, for 100 Thieves, both because it is one of Closer's best champions, but also because of the takeaway from the Renekton. You know, that pairing is something that people are really concerned about. So. Uh, I think it's a, a pretty smart pick. Yeah, absolutely agree with this one. So Lily gonna come through, the Nidalee on the other side. We'll see if the Tom Kench gets indeed Ooh, third Ezreal. pick in front of Thieves. Seems pretty likely. Yeah, Ezreal. Uh, Cloud9, I assume trying to find a matchup that they think will uh, maybe not give too much farm over to the son of Tom Kench. You can get poked out very, very easily with, with the Senna impunity. Ezreal can play that one far away. That, that to me already feels like, when I see an early Ezreal, this is like, we're not playing bot lane. We're going top, right? You know, we're yeah. playing towards the top side of the map. Feels like they want to focus on Fudge's lane. Feels like they want to potentially focus on Perk's lane, play towards that top side of the map, because generally Ezreal is one of those champions that can just be left alone on an island, can play the 1v2 comfortably, you know, can just farm it out, uh, enables roaming supports. And that's something that Cloud9 may be looking towards as a result. Now, going into this second round of picks here, we have the GP as the answer into Renekton. Can actually go really well, you know, at level one, level two uh, type things for GP. If you can utilize that trial by fire passive effectively, uh, that can be pretty powerful in that early laning phase uh, and should be yeah. something that helps to enable FBI, who is going to be playing this Senna down on that bottom side, you know, all towards the bot lane, potentially look to play towards that bot lane, which is what FBI uh, and who he were really known for in Lock-In, what 100 Thieves is really known for in Lock-In in the early spring split. Yeah, this will be interesting because I'm expecting a Tom Kench ban here, second for Cloud9, getting mm -hmm. rid of the most common pairing, unless these teams scrimmed a bunch and they realized, you know, there are other Senna lanes that 100 Thieves are willing to play, but Tom Kench is the one that, like, you know, the Klaxons blare uh, as like, hey, this is the lane match that they want to play. It's the lane match that they want to play. Um, and yeah, Tom Kench is indeed going to be the band. So we'll see if it's just going to be like a farming Alistair, farming set, I think actually can make a lot of sense here sense, as well. Yeah, yeah it's, that's probably the next in line. And um, I mean, who is an outstanding set player. We know FBI is going to be on the center almost certainly. And they're like, yeah, we could just grab Gangplank here. Give us one band. It's fine. Our replacement is almost as good. So, you know, do what you want with your bands. It's interesting to see the, the Lucian and the Aurelia both targeted towards perks. We very likely know that Renekton is going towards the top side. It's like 99% of the time that it is played up there. But perks is one of the guys who's playing a lot of these aggressive champions mid. You know, he's brought out the Yone, he's brought out the Aurelia. Uh, Lucian is another one that he is willing to play. He plays the Dristana, so that has been banned out. So a lot of focus towards perks here, towards keeping Ryan the safe. He will be the one with last pick. So it's going to be interesting to see how conservatively uh, Cloud9 wants to go here. Ooh. Oh, it's just blind, blind Yona. All right. Okay, not conservative at all. No, it's not. And Leona, Nautilus, something engaged, likely to be alongside. Keep in mind, Cloud9 do not have very good engage tools right now. Swirl mm -hmm. Sweet and Asleep is not reliable. Renekton Flanks, not reliable. So, like a Leona, like a Nautilus, of course, Rel is gone. That's the kind of thing you're looking for here. Otherwise, Cloud9 can only poke and split push, and that mm -hmm. makes it really tough to navigate the team comp. So Leona indeed will be the lock. Uh, gonna have a hard time, you know, surviving against Senna. You can try to engage. At, at the very least, you can say that uh, Set isn't Tom Kench. You can try to focus the Senna. The problem is Ezreal cannot reliably land all of his damage since minions and Set himself can block the skill shots. Or Yana gonna be the answer in mid to talk to this Yone. That'll be with the mid lane matchup here for Ryoma. And we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I mean, when, when you consider like what the actual like counters, so to speak, would be, you know, it's often things that are bruisers that you can play into these these champions like Yasuo and Yone mid lane, uh, things like Renekton, which Cloud9 often has. Um, but, you know, another another pick that actually would have been really interesting uh, is Set. Set is actually really good into Yone mid. This is another one of those champions that can match up well. So a flex would have been pretty cool, but uh, it is just 
the Orianna mid. Right, so nothing really surprising coming out from 100 Thieves. And, you know, I am never a fan of the red side drafts when you just go for a fifth pick. That could have just been a first pick blind pick and it wouldn't have changed, changed the draft whatsoever. It, it does, yeah. I think, work well with their composition. So it doesn't mean that it's like a horrible pick or, or some big blunder. You know, they can utilize that set, uh, you know, throw down the GP ulti, run in the set, you know, use him to deliver that Oriana ball, try to have those types of combos. And I think that can be pretty effective. But of course, when you're looking at, you know, a lane counter, some sort of advantage against perks here for Ioma. I don't really think they got it. I do think that Oriana is fine in the early laning phase there against the Yone. Uh, but that being said, you're expecting perks to take fleet forward. You're expecting him to go door and shield to be able to out sustain in those early levels. And then they are going to have pretty effective engage, you know, with a Leona uh, plus the Yone follow up. If you have a Renekton flanking and you can pull that off, that can be a very impactful start to a fight. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch for. I am, you know, I, I kind of agree with your point about how it's it's unexciting to see red team just, well, we grabbed the team fighting mid laner that everyone plays already, but yeah. they picked it for the composition. They said, look, we just need to make sure we have the follow up engage for the set. So we're going for it anyway. Not like Nidalee brings crowd control either. So mm -hmm. yeah, they were kind of locked into Orianna. We'll see if it works out in the end for them as we are on to the rift here for game one of this match. Upper bracket spot winner faces Team Liquid for a spot in the finals. If that one goes down later on. But right now, yes, indeed. Please be good people. Cloud 900 Thieves going to be doing battle here in this one. Best of five to see who can do better. Perks on the Yone. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, it should be a very interesting one here today. Notably, it will be the farming set and who he has brought teleport. So, you know, not expecting. Uh, to be under a tremendous amount of pressure here, I think, in this lane. You know, with the Ezreal plus Leona, there is potential, especially post 6 4 and all in. You know, if you can lock them down fully, uh, utilize the Ezreal ultimate, you know, have those kind of point and click stuns from Leona to guarantee your skill shots coming out, then there's maybe some threat. But FBI is playing Cleanse, and who he will be the farmer, he is going to be playing TP, uh, perhaps more worried about getting actually poked out than actually all in. And this will allow him to farm a little bit more aggressively, trade out his health for some of that gold, and then utilize that TP to come straight back to the lane and get things going. Uh, and yeah. notably, it's it's not a teleport actually on Zvent, right? We see a lot of Ezreals in, in these types of matchups go for the TP. So he is somewhat concerned about the pressure that is going to be brought here uh, from that 100 Thieves bot lane. You're going to see Perks taking the poke that he's, he expects to against an Orianna, otherwise relying on, as you mentioned, the Doran shield, which he did in fact buy to keep himself healthy. Fudge doing battle with Someday up the top side. Big Q going to get 106 health back, but Someday gets an extra parlay, and Fudge is at 130. His one and only potion has been chugged. Someday's going to get almost another Q, and level two is going to be first for Gangflank, it looks like. Yep, and you've got to be really careful, actually, especially at level one as the Renekton. If the Gangplank is utilizing his passive and, and always using that on the Renekton instead of on the minions, it can go pretty bad for Renekton. Uh, and being able to force out, you know, that potion early levels here, you want to be playing as the aggressor uh, in this matchup as Gangplank. You want to be autoing the minions, getting your grass proc ready, and then queuing this guy on cooldown, you know, really trying to pressure him heavily. Uh, the question is going to be, can Fudge keep the wave off his turret and keep enough health that there is some sort of a threat from a potential blabber gank, because that's where uh, this lane can get a bit awkward. Nice trade here, though. Good damage has the shield on as well. So Ryama going to be losing on this trade somewhat. Perks comes out at mm -hmm. decent half HP. Ryama a bit low on mana. Now, another fight in the mid lane. Good stun comes out of Vulcan. And Aftershock on for a oh. bit, but the punch comes in for 173. That is a solid trade down here. But as Ven wants to try to harass Uhi off this farm, he's going to oh, take no. a lot of damage from FBI. I mean, he knows who he is cooldown list. The, the face breaker's down, the stun's down. So. Uh, gets to take a little bit of time and get some damage in, but does mean FBI hits him back. Yeah, and I, I just feel like you're giving over so much free gold to the Senna when you just allow him to take those types of trades. You know, he's going to be stealing souls from, from both of the members in a trade like that and actually getting the Spectral Sickle gold. Uh, so it does look like the reason Cloud9 were trading that aggressively was they really wanted to crash the wave, be able to set up this double scuttle that they bring over perks, actually donate him the scuttle on bot side. Blaver takes the scuttle up on top side. So that is the reason they're trading that aggressively. And of course, who he as a result is missing out on a lot of this farm. Um, we'll see how well he's going to be able to farm it out in these next minutes as now he has no potion. He does have the teleport though, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, to come back to lane if he gets poked out too heavily. All right.
already. Well, this wave should, I believe, go back Cloud9's way. FBI standing in the way to block Mystic Shots. Nice, he gave him one. I uh, gave him the recall stop on a Vulcan. He might, uh, I mean, yeah, he was on a ward anyway. He would have got out with a minion, so it wouldn't have changed that much, but still happened. Uh, end of the day, it's perks. Yeah, every single time E is back up, go in for the jump, try to get Q3, get the W, try to trade it out. Ryama this time dodges the whirlwind, so wins mm -hmm. the trade and gets some decent damage back as he has already TP back to lane with exactly. the tier plus extra mana crystal. And that's why now Perks wants to trade aggressively. You know, when you're in these situations and your lane opponent has used Teleport and you have not, you want to walk this line of being able to actually uh, force out some of their resources, trade pretty effectively, but also you have to be sure that you are not going to die while doing that. You don't want to get too over-aggressive. But if you can force out some potions, take a couple hundred health off them, knowing you're going to be teleporting back soon anyway, there's not really any cost there. So. Uh, will be interesting to see if Bryoma takes another quick reset or if he's going to stay around because he spent half of his mana and perks will be going back to base soon and likely picking up sustain, likely working towards that shield bow, uh, which is going to make it a lot more difficult for Ryoma to really poke him out. Yeah, Blabber's early sweeper, though, has found some use already. Knocked down a couple of wards. As now Fudge wants to fight topside. Blabber coming by as well. Someday with Predator on, gonna take some decent damage. But Closer's nearby. Gets Wallop, gets the heal back in. Swirlseed's going to miss. And Closer can put on some danger. But Fudge's stun should be back up in a second. And that means he will not dive in, will not trade flash with Blabber. And it will just be an escape. Someday managed to keep every summoner up. And there is no kill topside. A pretty calm play on both sides, honestly. First game of the playoffs, no one blowing a summoner in that situation, I think is pretty impressive. Cool heads do prevail up on that top side, who he has just regen back up to full health, hasn't actually gone back to base or utilized the teleport just yet either. And we're gonna have to track how many souls FBI is able to pilfer here from this Cloud9 bot lane. When you are playing against someone like Leona, if they're not looking for all ins, it's so easy to grab a soul every single time they step forward for an execute. Uh, with that relic shield. FBI yeah, taking some of the farm once in a while. You can see four CS in the center. Some of that seems to be on purpose. Otherwise, he'll be getting a lot of it as they warm up the cannon minion and make sure that he can keep farming on the set. 35 CS to 50, though. There is obviously a big CS lead for the Ezreal. Uh, who he having to drop some of the farm to make up for the fact that, obviously, FBI is out earning Vulcan here. And, okay, first engage comes across, finds a decent stun. Ignite on as well. Who he very, very low, but has the punch available. So no tower dive is possible. Big damage, though. End of the day, 100 Thieves walks out with their lives. Yep, and we will see who he likely teleport back. Uh, they may want to just let this wave chill, and he could run, but because the wave stacked to their tower, it would slow push towards their opponents, which is going to be awkward. And he's actually TPing for a potential flank here. Looks like they want to set up for a dragon take, potentially, as Closer is down in the area, but Blabber is down here as well, and Vulcan is on the roam towards mid, so a little bit of an aggressive TP, but doesn't result in anything there from who he yeah, if there was a greedy recall, yeah, it would have been sweet. Regardless, he's not going to lose any pressure. So it, it seems to be like the right play. There's upside and no downside, so why not do it? Top laner's fighting yet again. Fudge, yeah, uses the W to knock down the barrel early. Uh, you get two hits out of it, and if you're empowered, you get three. You don't want to waste it, but still would be helpful. Ult comes across. Cannon's hitting as well, but Fudge might just find himself the kill. Someday has to flash to stay alive. Yes, Fudge got a gank earlier, but forces the TP, or the flash, I should say, in the 1v1. Nicely done. Gets the ult out there, too. Very long cooldown on that gangplank ult in the early game here. And Someday does not have his teleport, so Fudge could actually just fully shove out this wave. Looks like that's going to be the call from him here. And Someday just going to try to stay around and collect the wave as it does get pushed in. Uh, we can see Perks went for the early Berserker Greaves in this matchup, you know, reducing the cooldown on that Q. Uh, attack speed, move speed, very effective on this champion. But Ryoma with the blue buff and a tier is just going to be able to spam out spells constantly. And it really isn't in much threat, I think, uh, of getting abused at this point. Back at bottom lane here. First few recos come through. Nice. Always a fan of Ezreal's walk into the brush, throw the ult mm -hmm. for poke. You very rarely have, like, a big play with the ults available. You're not, you know, helping the top lane die yeah. more often than not. So dealing damage to your lane opponents is actually a really good use of it and just getting the poke down. Uh, but, yeah, I want to, once again, revisit what happened in top lane. You can look at the cooldowns on the ultis for Fudge and then over for Someday. Reckless cooldowns are much, much, much shorter. Yep. And so round two of that play is possible. And just to the fact that Gangplay, of course, cannot help bottom lane if there is a fight or help mid if there is a fight, which is normally the strength of someone like Gangplay. Yep, exactly. And, and you have to be really careful. Next time the ultimate is up for Renekton, it's a flash Renekton with ulti, and you will have no ulti and no flash as GP. Ooh. So that becomes Ooh. very, very scary. But the wraparound what here on sneak. Sven, 
Dash, flash, there we go. Gets away from the pullback. Dodges every single ability, but that is still flash down. Good sneak by 100 Thieves to get a flash back on that side of the map. Yeah, they do get the flash, but it does cost Suhi his flash, so it's it's not as bad as I initially thought that was going to be. I was thinking 100 Thieves may be able to force the flash without committing their summoners. In the end, it is a trade. Uh, maybe a positive one, but it's it doesn't look like there's any hex flash or anything available for set. So I would say, right. you know, if anything, it's it's even. Um, you know, Ezreal obviously has a lot of mobility in his kit, and I think is actually less reliant on the flash than who he is. But still, yep. worth the attempt. That's actually interesting seeing the fact that it's not hex flash on set. This is, I think, primarily because he's farming set in exactly, bot lane. Yeah. But who he normally is running hex flash. But normally, if you're support set, you're sitting in brush, charging it up, and zoning people out. This man has to sit in lane and last hit minions, which means he kind of needs fleet. And he kind of needs resolve secondary to not get poked out. So there's just no room for X Flash in the build. So, yeah, to your point, uh, he is the primary engage in the team. I know you mentioned the TP at the beginning of the game as well. As primary engage, he's the guy teleporting behind people. Like, he's functionally just a slightly under level top lane set, right? Like, his farm is six behind Fudge. Aside from being level six instead of eight, like, he is top lane set. He's the guy TP flanking late game. He's the guy engaging the tools. That's how he's got to play this game. It also is interesting to me that, you know, he went for the Resolve Secondary, but he didn't actually take second win for the laning, you know, playing against this Ezreal. Uh, every time you step forward, you're going to be getting poked out a little bit here. Instead, went for the Bone Plating, which, you know, may be more effective in a team fight, uh, but definitely does make it harder to actually survive in this laning phase. And as a result, you know, he has gone down quite a bit of farm. Yeah, that's actually a good point that uh, he isn't going for the laning room, but the one that's that's more for team fighting. So, I guess maybe trying to short the fact that he is still in uh, in a duo lane XP income. Mm -hmm. So his his level and thus health and armor are lower. So making it up for runes, I'm not sure, but yeah, but, you know we could spend a lot of time looking at those choices. At the end of the day, though, there's still other parts going on. We yep. saw perks roam top side didn't get much done, but you know made closer. I guess take Krug's late. Uh, Blabber with the hair that they got, which is welded to him. That's off of Fudge and Perks' pressure. It's coming topside. It looks like they may, in fact, just crash up in this top lane. They have gotten, I believe, one plate down from laning phase so far, as they may get more, but Closer is right behind. Now, Patrol Ward spots means they know what's going on. Blabber but four might still be willing to dive. Five. Yeah, Leona's here. Perks is moving. Hunter Thieves is trying to respond. And they do have the Santa ulti, so I don't think you go for the dive here. I think Cloud9 at this point, because they're spotted, you're just moving people up to make sure you can get that Herald in. Yeah. And that's smart by Closer, because he doesn't have camps topside. There's nothing there for him except covering his top laner while his Romp's respawning and his blue spawning soon. But he's like, but the play is topside. I've got to be there. I can't play just farm efficiency. I need to be on the right spot of the map. Good by Closer to be there. Good reactions. And now Ryama, the target, CC chain full to dead. First blood goes to Perks. Really nicely done there. Vulcan flash ulti. The follow-up comes through. Ryoma does not flash the ultimate coming through from Vulcan there. And as soon as that lands, it was a perfect CC chain. You have the Leona CC to follow it up with the Zenith Blade with the Q stun and Yone over top. Really well done there from Cloud9. No hesitation. And they do grab their mid laner first blood. They're up. 1.6k gold early on. Pretty significant gold lead. Uh, but 100 Thieves, at the very least, will get a plate back here on this bottom side. Yep. All right. That is two plates taken bot in total. Some decent money going back in. But yes, indeed, quite the gold difference there. One plate in mid, three in top. Harold, of course, being a large part of that one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure, a 20 CS lead for Ezreal. But keep in mind, Senna has 13 real CS. And so, you know, bot lane has more gold on the 100 Thieves side. Here it is one more time. It really, all it comes down to is Ryoma needed to flash that, right? Yeah. You you have yep. tons of time to actually flash that. Uh, when you know that Perks is coming down here as well, you know, when the ultimate is thrown, you've, you've kind of got to throw that respect to it and, and just flash that early on. When you don't flash that, there's no ability to react to the subsequent CC. You're going to be locked up. Perks getting first blood, putting himself in a really nice position. and. When Yone gets to an early shield bow, he becomes such a pain for people to lane against. You know, both GP and Orianna in that matchup are so heavily reliant on being able to whittle them down, and it just becomes impossible at that point. You know, with fleet footwork, uh, with the domination runes in the secondary tree, uh, plus that shield bow, you are healing through everything they are throwing at you, and yep. uh, he can really play extremely aggressively at that point. He's even picked up just kind of the casual null magic mantle here. I don't think that's going to be really built into anything early on. Uh, and just to be able to survive against Nidalee and uh, this Orianna as well, which I think is pretty smart, yeah. given that those are really the, the only people he's likely to be interacting with. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, honestly. I'm a, I'm a fan of the build. The component's in there for a while. I Yeah, like I said, Wits End probably not happened for a while. QSS doesn't seem that important. I think it interacts well with Set because it's a suppression. I know you don't get rid of Airborne anymore, but there might still be something funky because it's a suppression as well. Uh, regardless, yeah, looking good right now for Cloud9. I think many people expected this to be a Cloud9 win. They were first seed after all. They won the last best of five they played in the lock-in tournament. Sure, that was a, a reverse sweep back then, but it's looking pretty good on the Cloud9 side. Bot lane has yet to find themselves a kill or anything. Right, The one real strong point people were looking forward to with 100 Thieves. Uh, they've got some farm and some plates, but not much else. A dragon, the second one now spawning. That might be a play as the squad's around. Yone walking over. Cloud9 may get this one away. Yeah, it looks like they're probably going to be willing to, but Fudge is moving down. He does have teleport, so if they want to contest, they still have the ability to. And Perks has now arrived. They've got the Essence Reaver done on Zven, and they're looking. Looking. They're going to find big damage. FBI force him to flash away. Blabber, Zonia's in the front. They're going to go for the front line. Who? He gets a shield. FBI kills off Blabber. Who? He's going to be traded back. FBI going to drop. Fudge gets away. Chased down by Closer, but he buys enough time for a trade kill. Three to two so far to Cloud9. Dragon still alive. A better team fight for Cloud9 yet again. Yeah, Cloud9 going to be able to come out on top in that it's a trade of teleports. Every flash from the four that were already there from 100 Thieves is gone. So the summoners going worse for 100 Thieves, the kills going worse for 100 Thieves. Cloud9 will not go towards that dragon. They just go back towards the lanes, look to push it in. Perks is going to push in mid, then catch the wave top. We'll see when they want to reset here. But Hexflash coming in big from Vulcan. Hexflash over the wall. Catching Ryoma there with the ultimate. And then in goes Blabber. The TP does arrive here from Fudge. FBI had a really nice Senna ultimate across multiple members. But then Perks, the E is already out. He R's in, flashes uh, as well. Excuse me, did not flash. Used that Q2 to dash over to follow into that blue pit. Getting another kill. Has the shield bow complete. And he's going to be able to kill the first tower of the game solo up top. They may lose Dragon off this uh, because he doesn't have teleport to actually you know, get down you know, if Fudge wanted to yeah. join, but I think it's well worth it. He's going to be ridiculously rich at this point. Yep. So Cloud9 betting big on gold income. Rift Herald top side. Finish the turret later on. Give that gold over to Perk. Spend money getting kills. And the result is a nearly 3,000 gold lead. The, the punishment is, yes, indeed, 100 Thieves have gotten the first two dragons. But the hope being that your gold income is so good that you can connect the next ones afterwards. Yeah. And even still, 100 Thieves actually able to get more done bot side. They will eventually knock in this turret as well, anting the turret score one to one. I just think it's so concerning how strong Perks is going to be. I'll be interested to see what he actually has when he goes back to buy, because I don't think he has actually base since that, that dragon fight where he got a couple kills. He just took that tower top. And now they're looking to actually set up a potential dive here mid. They're going to drop the Herald. So mid lane turret is also going to be gone here. Perks is just going to be so rich. And, and Yone is one of those yeah. champions that I think snowballs better than almost anyone in the game. You know, when you get to a quick two items and you have that shield bow, it's so tough to burst them down. And with the IE plus shield bow as that two item spike, you you can 100 to zero carries like it's nothing. Oh yeah. It's rough. It, it's really, really rough. And Senna doesn't have the easiest itemization to stay alive longer. Uh, Oriana. Oh. Now, okay, yep, they get it. Um, it is still 11.5, I will point out. So this is pre-nerf to arm guard. Uh, which is maybe uh, worth considering. It's also, uh, you know, before the change to Shield Bow, where it gives a bunch of bonus AD on top of it. So uh, Perks is going to be less lethal this game than he would be on, like, live if you're able to play Snowlicky right now. Not that it might change very much, but, you know, that is one difference to keep in mind. It means we may see Arm Guard come through for Ayoma as a second item to stay alive a bit longer as a champ like this. Yeah, we'll see if that's going to be the call from him. Uh, but I feel like if you didn't build it for the landing phase, you're just not building it until maybe yeah. way late. My guess is he's just going to be, you know, going for for his tier upgrade here, uh, going towards that Seraphs as the second item. Cloud9 just moving around the map as a squad. Vulcan and Blabber holding hands, moving around, pressuring people off of these towers. Closer is shadowing someday, knowing that he could be under fire here. Uh, and it is actually an early QSS there for perks. So he grabs okay. uh, the QSS plus the BF, wants to be able to make sure he has the ability to go deep and not just get locked down. Uh, that is something that you are in danger of. When you go in with the E, if you get CC'd up, you can sometimes get killed off. So the QSS will allow you to QSS out of any potential CC and snap back if you are in danger. Things like the center route, potentially the Everfrost route, you know, even something yep. uh, like that snap together there from Huhi, you should be able to QSS and then just E back.
Yep, it's basically, that's it. it it's Iverfrost, Senna W, and Set E. Uh, maybe the R in case it's coded a little bit weird, but my expectation is not because yeah. it's an airborne effect. We'll see. I'm just, I'm just not the expert on that one. Don't run into that a lot myself. So we'll see. He's aiming at a couple different abilities, and he's going to try to make sure he is unstoppable during it. Muramana getting pretty close here for Sven. Essence Fever first has been the common Ezreal build for a while now. Mythic third with the mana stacking. You basically can't run out of mana. You get some really good Q poke. The cooldowns are good. It's a nice build overall. Mm -hmm. Zonia's first, very standard for Lilia's as well. Going for damage, by the way. There aren't any real other magic damage threats in the team. So no moon staff this time around. Just going to go for the Leandries. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Uh, you can see that Night Harvester is the build from Closer. I, I think he's going to have tough time getting value out of it. And he does have additional magic damage from the Orianna. So I would have been more OK with a supportive style build from him. Um, to me, you know, when, when the Nidalees are building full damage. It feels like it needs to be more of a snowballing style of game for them to get a lot of effect out of it, uh, because I do think it's going to be difficult for him to really ever dive in, you know, even with this more firsty style of build in a team fight. I don't see the risk can happen, but you're right, it might be tough. Uh, honestly, everyone is either very tanky or uh, very mobile in the case of Sven. So yeah. yeah, it could be tough to find the right target on closer's side. He can see a one level lead in the jungle. Top laners are close. Fudge. Obviously, with all the help he got from his team, bunch of wards coming down, the entire jungle taken away, he's able to take down the third turret of the game. Harold crashed top and bottom. Fudge, or sorry, top and mid. Fudge took bottom. Three run turret score, 4,000 gold lead. Next dragon spawns in 50 seconds. This is one that Cloud9, I believe, should not be allowed to give away. Mm -hmm. They've got to make sure they're on the right side of the map. Perks does have TP and will have to make that teleport happen to get down to that side of the map because we are running short on time. To recall and walk. Yeah, I think he's going to push out this one wave, and then we'll see if he bases and then looks for a TP off of a buy, because he hasn't been back to base for a bit. I'm not sure exactly how much gold he has, but he's doing the Krug, so I think uh, he won't be going back to base, that's for sure. Someday we'll be heading up towards topside to answer, but I do expect them to contest. As, as you say, I don't think you want to be giving away three straight dragons. Uh, it just gives 100 Thieves that light at the end of the tunnel. It gives them that potential win condition of a soul, so... Perks is moving down. He's just farming the <laughs> entire enemy jungle away on yep. his on his trip down here. Ooh, well, Fudge trouble. is the target. Javelin doesn't quite anything, but it might not matter as the rest of the squad comes in. Dunk into the wall. Goodbye to Fudge. He has been flattened. He's an edge piece. He's gone. We'll see him back in the base when he respawns. And that means Dragon is kind of a freebie to 100 Thieves. You can't really win a 4v5 here. Yeah. Even Cloud9 tries. That's, that's a pretty big deal. You know, the fact that they're actually going to have to give this up. Fudge. Just out of position. You know, he doesn't have a tier one tower there. He's playing pretty far up the lane. You have got to know the 100 Thieves are going to be setting up around this around this dragon. The only person you've seen is actually Gangplank. Where do you think everyone else is, right? Of course, the other four members from 100 Thieves would be down on that bottom side. So pretty costly mistake there from Fudge. I do think the game plan here from Cloud9 was you know, build towards this inevitable third dragon fight, stack as much gold as possible, then you're super strong, you can test them there, you stop the soul stacking at this point, and because he gets caught, well, that's kind of all out the window, and now 100 Thieves have the opportunity to try to go for the, that soul in, in just about five minutes. Yep. And the spikes come through. He's been done with his Muramana as well. We know Perk probably has a full item ready to combine. Mm -hmm. If it's IE, maybe not quite, but he's getting close anyway. And now 100 Thieves, yeah, they're battling back a gold deficit, but Cloud Soul can answer a lot of that difference, honestly. If yeah. they manage to get one more good dragon fight, it nullifies, I would say, maybe 70% of the gold lead, 80% of the gold lead, and, and feels like a lot you know, fairer of a game. Vulcan gonna go in, they're gonna go for a sleep here as well. They're gonna find a set, Drowsy ult comes on to only one, dunks him backwards, Vulcan Here's is Perks. just gonna die. 100 Thieves have a better time than the team fight. Can Perch do enough though, someday. Oh! Cleanly, three man knock up, big damage, FBI is gonna drop. Huge by Perch to turn one back around. Yeah, he's going in. Cloud9 not super coordinated on that engage. It is actually Bloodthirster second here for Perk, so all about the sustain. Vulcan going in, but Perks was not TPing when that happened. If Perks was alive and, and arriving as Vulcan went in, I think that fight could have gone a lot better for Cloud9. Perks, of course, does get a kill back for them. He is ridiculously strong. They will have to back off his TP. Now, Summoner heal to get out of the slow in time, because who oh, he's he is beelining fast. over there. And Sven flash into stun, into Everfrost, and a shockwave, and Haymaker into absolute death. Nothing you could have done but not be there in the first place. Yeah, nice play there from who he <laughs> comes in with the TP and the turbo chem tank, and he was so fast. But I mean, Perks makes that a one for one mid lane, but I think could have been a lot better for them if they were more coordinated on that engage, if they timed it out better with Vulcan and him going in at the same time. 
100 Thieves going one for one mid. They get a kill on bot. We can watch this one more time here. Uh, Vulcan, I think a really nice engage. Zenith Blade to Someday, then Flash Pass on FBI. But just now is Perks actually arriving, and Vulcan is already dead at that point. Perks, though, finds a great angle moving towards the side as they stack up. Three-man ulti does finish off FBI, getting the summoners out of him as well. That was huge. Then Cloud9, just a little bit too aggressive. The double TP answer, the slow on the ultimate there from Someday. And who he, that man can run. He's fast. Watch out. Catching up to and locking down Sven. Ryoma, easy Everfrost to follow it up. And they do get a kill. And the healing cut comes in. It's going to be Ryoma grabbing the Oblivion Orb now after his Seraph's Embrace is done. And as we saw, Perks is indeed stacking Lifesteal. Mm -hmm. Shield Bow, Bloodthirster, the man wants to drain tank. And that's going to be cut by 40% until full Merlin Avakon comes yep. around. And Ruhuhi, he's found a target again. Zven's already dashed, so now Ruhuhi's going to find his real target. Uh, going to dunk into the wall, but the engage might come in oh, elsewhere. Sleep coming in. Ruhuhi going to be a target. Big shields come across. That's going to decay down, and Ruhuhi is going to die. Zven grabs the kill. Too far of an engage for the 100 Thieves support. Yeah, just didn't realize where everyone was. There was a lot of Cloud9 members, and he catches up to Ven, and everyone from Cloud9 is just around him. So Cloud9 now going to go straight onto the Baron. Perks can kind of just drain tank this for the squad. Has so much lifesteal, he can take a lot of the damage, but 100 Thieves is in the area. You've got to be careful about a potential steal. I don't think Cloud9 need to try to 50-50 this, so they're turning. Ult hits FBI to half. Perks has ulti, has to get away from Closer. Shock waved in. That was beautiful by 100 Thieves. Ryoma finish? helped set it up. Closer can finish. Blabber can try to smite, but it goes to Closer. And it's time for Cloud9 to run away. Oh, what a terrible Baron from Cloud9. There was no need to force that hard. They were in a winning position. They give away Baron. And now your opponents close the gold gap off of that big steal from Closer. And they have potential to grab Soul here. Perks gets speared over the wall, tries to dash away, caught by the Shockwave, finished off, and then Closer. You have a better smite finish here as the Nidalee. You have that Q smite. He didn't even need to use the smite, actually. Looks like he just got killed off by a little bit of damage coming through yeah. from Ryoma, plus his... his Flabber Q smite to 300. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, I'm going to hope I time it right. 300 off, and all right, yoink. Ours now. And, and now, now 100 12. Thieves. You know, with the, the additional power from the Baron buff, you're actually stronger at this moment in time. You have more effective power despite that gold disadvantage. If they take the soul, they are really fully in control of this game. Cloud9, not playing well around that Baron. Huge overforce, and they are punished big time. Okay, Perks, you're the man with three kills. You're the man with the gold lead, highest CS in the game. Most kills on your team. Is it going to be enough for you to be the difference that your team needs? Fudge trying to build up Fury. Dragon down to 5k, Sven doing a bit of poke. Blabber lost the last smite. We'll see if Closer wins this one. Engage comes in for Vulcan, dunks him right back in. Perch wants in, doesn't catch Ryoma with the knockup and can't get the rest. Shago catches Vibes though, but they still get the kill. One for zero so far. Closer zone is his and Cloud9 on the chase. And what he found kill two and three. Make it four, make it all five. You thought you cut Cloud9, but they ace you for nothing. And they're going bot. They're going to try to push here. We'll see how much they can get. The death timers are long. I don't think that they could end off this, but it should be an inhibitor for sure. We'll see how quickly Cloud9 wants to try to move towards the end. I think I think, think they're they trying win. to end, yeah, because otherwise I... you leave one person on the dragon. So they think they have enough to win the game here. Respawn timers, 12 seconds on FBI, 10 oh. now on Hoovy. I don't think they get the next, but they no, make, yeah, and no. they realize it now. They're yeah. like, okay, we spent the entire team. Now it does save them time in terms of you can get out of the base a little bit faster because you killed the turrets and inhibs a bit faster. And you're probably not going to get this dragon stolen anyway. But yeah, they, they went for the big play. Said, maybe we have enough. Okay, we don't. Bud Light Ace watch it again. All right, here it is one more time. Vulcan on the flank, finding it at an angle. Fudge as well is behind the team. And I just feel like 100 Thieves lost track of that. Fudge was on minions, and no one is marking him. No one is keeping him out of the fight. He just walks in to all the carries there. Blabber finds a good sleep. Perks gets into the back line. But losing track of the Renekton there, who's playing on your minions in mid lane, is not a way that 100 Thieves are going to be able to win these fights. If Huhi is diving deep and no one is marking Renekton, that's what the fight is going to look like, because everyone else is squishy. Yep. 
Beautifully done. And Fudge, I mean, he walked the whole way there. Like, we were calling out the fact that, like, he's hitting Gromp, he's running around past the blue buff, he ran over down the mid lane. I mean, he was in full vision the him. whole time. He, he was yeah. literally on the red team's <laughs> minions, waiting for the flank. The minions yep. were attacking him, so they had vision. Uh-huh. He just trapes his way back there, yeah. and he's stealthy. But, like, here's the thing. Everyone sleeps on Fudge. They forget he exists. This is what happens. You forget he exists, and he uh, shows up right behind with the big stun, and yep. your mid laner's dead. So. Sneaky crocodile. He is, he is. You know, it turns out Cloud has still have some sneaky members on the team, even uh, with him gone. He's just <laughs> in the top lane now. <laughs> All right. Perks, he's got a GA here, so not going towards the eye. He really wants to be able to dive deep, trying to focus a bit more on his survival in these fights. Has yep. the GA, has the QSS. Uh, Sereldia's Grudge, I believe it is called, coming through for Sven. Uh, which is quite an effective item on the champion. It is kind of like the, the old Iceborne style. You know, you get the slow on your abilities here. Uh, can allow you to both kite out and potentially chase down in some of these fights. So a lot of big item completions coming through for Cloud9. Uh, they are again on the offensive here. Pop quiz, do you know who Cyrilda is? No. In the lore of League of Legends? No. Uh, it's either Ashes or Sejuani's ancestor. Oh, okay. uh, the like initial like leader Ooh. of the either yeah, I know. Ow, okay. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That, that's, uh, you know, the sort of Averosin, not Averosin, the Vrilya Triumvirate. Yeah, one of the ancestors there. I give myself Crash like a 1% chance of knowing the answer to a lower question. Yeah, just on understandable. Average. Yeah. That wasn't uh, one of the 1%, so. Th it wasn't one of the 1%, no. yeah. No. You, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, careful, though, Sven. Uh, okay, yep, it's fine. There's no way, it's not fine. Who he's no. in the way? He's gonna get the face breaker. He's gonna dunk him right back in and goodbye. Just pile drives him into the fountain. And we'll see you respawning in 45 seconds. Baron's alive a little bit after that one, so it's no free objective, but he's gonna kill back. Yeah, it's a kill and a flash there. And yes, he can always E over the wall, but when no one is around you from their team, Hunter Thieves just keep chasing. There's so much move speed on this set. Who has the dead mans, who has that chem tank, he can chase you past your dash, unless you have that team behind you ready to defend you. And Renek and Leona were not there. Blabber was in the area, but Porks was up on top side. So as soon as Hunter Thieves realizes there's no one behind him, they're just going to continue that chase, grab that easy kill. Yeah, really, really nicely done. And who keeps being the one? Like, he mm -hmm. is the engage on this team. He is the one who does it. He's got set up because the Ori can speed him up. He's got some help from the Senna sometimes. The GP ult can help as well. Like there, there's extra tools here that make it easier. But who he is the guy who's got to be the go button. Once he was wrong, uh, and it was a bit tragic, and they gave away a kill, and it turned into a bad team fight in mid. But otherwise, he's been getting a lot done to make sure the engage they're there. Yeah. Now, weathering a 4,000 gold deficit despite getting Baron earlier, they once again are going to be on Dragon Soul in a minute 40, but Baron is up first, and that's the objective play around. And Cloud9 need to play with more respect to that engage, right? I think they're just underestimating how far away 100, 100 Thieves can close the gap from, who he has so much move speed that even if you have that Ezreal E, it's, it's not enough to keep you safe, and Blabber over the wall here. Does. Flash it. To force, yeah, forcing that flash yeah. out really nicely done by Aroma. Good shockwave over the wall, but doesn't mean for the, this next little window, uh, they are going to be weaker without that. True. Only got, uh, I guess, 50 ability haste is not too bad. 20 for the boots, 20 for the mythic, 10 for um, It should be up before years, anything but... happens, so not a big Yeah, deal. by Dragon for sure, but if there was like an instant Baron rush, you're like, oh, yeah. we, uh, we're missing that one. Yeah. That's mostly what I was thinking about if Cloud9 would yep. look for any any sort of a Baron start immediately. But of course, that was not the case there. So great play from Ryoma. We will see. Uh, interesting build here from FBI. You know, he was going for what I thought was the Rage Blade second, but then kind of bailed out on it a little bit. Now has a zeal. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm never a fan of kind of the, those halfway builds mm. where, where it feels like he decided I need a rapid fire is my assumption. Uh, but now he's kind of with components of, of two items and just feels like Raid Play would be much more effective. Yeah, I was about to say, like, Phantom Dancer is a very good item, but it's like, you don't need a second cloak for Phantom yeah, Dancer. Don't. I mean, yeah. So I'm curious if there's actually a math problem here, because you get, like, three quarters of Rage Blade by just getting the Rage Knife, right? You get most of the conversion. Mm -hmm. So there's, mate, it, it's a math problem. There's an argument that, like, actually Rage Knife Zeal is better than finishing Rage Blade. Uh, but you don't need the Crit Cloak point, on top for anything, though. Yeah, well, the, the cloak does the rest of Rage Blade, right? Yeah. So it, it's Rage Knife Zeal Rage Blade would be the idea, and it, it might actually be mathematically correct. I'm, I'm now curious that after this series, I will go do that math and tweet about it, and, and then we'll all know together. But that's my that's my theory that it's actually just like the correct way of doing this build. Okay, well, maybe I'll be wrong. We can uh, check on that after the series. Interesting stuff. 
I, I do always think you have to take into consideration the power spike too when when you hit those sure. two items that that can be important. Uh, you know when you're fighting around key objectives, it's it's similar to the reason that you know things like elixirs could be so effective, right? Oh yeah, and that is stunting your build path. But if you need to win this fight now, there is no better way to spend 500 gold, right? Than than actually getting an elixir right before a fight. Uh, this one turning a little bit more passive over the last couple of minutes. You know, Cloud9 do grab another dragon here for themselves. 100 Thieves decided not to contest at that. So it does feel like it's going to be much more about the neutral objectives. Cloud9 have been largely in control of the game, but have made some pretty myster serious mistakes around these objectives. You know, that lost Baron uh, was definitely an unforced error uh, from Cloud9. Giving that away, I think, ha has made them play a little bit more slowly, knowing that their opponents are sitting at soul point, knowing that it's later into the game. They're playing, I think, a lot more cautious now. Ezult does half of FBI's health, and it's not going to get better anytime soon. Pretty good poke on a Sunday as well. Barrels get rid of the mid. Robert kind of wants in. The perks coming in, dunked back. We're going to buy some time for his team. Rage not going to find much either, as they don't get much of a sleep now. They've got FBI. Not going to find the root, though, and they're going to walk away. Vulcan now chunked down. Be careful. He's still taking damage. Pops a locket shield. May still die, and someday going to find one kill. In the back lane goes perks. Can't kill Huey. Has to jump right back out. Someday very, very low. Gets dropped down. Time to run away. 4v4 on the map. Perks wants to find a way in, but can't just yet. No ulti means it's not going to be an easy move. Closer jumps in, but careful. He got baited. He got baited. He got out smart, and he is going to be dropping. Perch goes for the kill on backside as well, but he's 1v2. Sonya's dodges true shot barrage, and Perch can't find the rest of the damage. Who he now going to drop as well, and Cloud9 just had the numbers. It is 4v2. Shock going to buy some time, and it's time to run away. But be careful, because the slows are still in. F oh my gosh, Blabber makes it happen. Right That's up against drop, and it's another Bud Light Ace for Cloud9 right in front of the base. It's time to close the game. What a fight there! So back and forth between Cloud9 and 100 Thieves. It looked like 100 Thieves might have had it at the beginning of that fight, but Cloud9 kited out, stay alive. They take the ace, and they're going to take the game. Absolutely beautiful game. Back and forth, back and forth. We had some throws, we had some catches, we had some outstanding team fights. Cloud9 take game one of the best of five. Damn, that was a crazy.